السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله انتجبه لولايته واختصه برسالته وأكرمه بالنبوة أمينا على غيبه ورحمة للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الذين ذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطحرهم تطحيرا رسيكم بعد الله بتقوى الله We are getting close to the month of uh, Ramadan, the month of fasting. While we know that the main purpose of fasting of the month of Ramadan is the spiritual dimension which has to do with the issue of taqwa, you know, elevating ourselves to a level where we have more consciousness of Allah's presence in our day-to-day -day life. But fasting is also connected to another dimension which is not the main purpose of Ramadan and that is the health of a human body because if you look at the look at the ahadith that we have from the Prophet and the Imams they have emphasized on this point that one of the ways of keeping yourself um, physically healthy is to go through the process of fasting but that means not just in the month of Ramadan you know there are so many Uh, months recommended every Islamic month, the first Thursday of the month, last Thursday of the month, the three days in, in between, 13th, 14th, and 15th of the month. But even if you go with the first and the last Thursday, I think that would be, uh, you can actually combine. If you have qada and you do both, you get sawab for both of it. And so the, the issue of fasting is not just the month of Ramadan, it is across the entire Islamic calendar. One of the concepts that we have in uh, a hadith where they talk about zakat, sharing what you have with others, basically uh, parting you know, uh, away with something which, which belongs to you. Of course, we know zakat of mal, we know zakat of knowledge to share with others. There is also a concept of zakatul badan, And zakatul badan actually refers to fasting. So you are basically depriving your body of certain things. And that is considered to be one of the ways of keeping ourselves healthy. It's not that Islam is only the world of, uh, the religion of the other world. No, it talks about the importance of health here also. One of the sayings of our first imam is that, you know, afdalun ni'am as-sihha, one of the best, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have good uh, health. In one hadith he compares that. He says, you know, uh, the blessings of Allah is sa'atul mal, abundance and wealth, but then, and also to have a good health. But on the level of comparison he says, you know, afdalun ni'am. Wa afdal, when he says, you, when, when he talks about sa'atul mal, he says com comparing affluence of wealth and then the health of sa'atul badan, he says the health of the body takes more priority over ab abundance of wealth. And in Islam, you know, we have some very simple, straightforward guidelines. We really don't think about it sometimes, uh, and that's where There is a need for each one of us to go back to the basics as far as Islam is concerned. The first ruling or the first um, idea that Islam has about this issue is moderation in eating. And that's where you see the famous ayat um, of the Quran in Surah number 7, ayat 31. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu. The ayat is not talking about eating. It's actually talking about 
you know, control yourself. So the order is not about kulu wa shrabu. No, the main intent of that sentence is wala tusrifu. Allah didn't, didn't need to say to us, eat and drink. Even if there was no ayat in Quran, no hadith of any masum on this issue, we will be eating. Because it's part of the nature that Allah has created. So he didn't need this ayat to say, kulu wa shrabu, eat and drink. Now the main intent of this ayat, the message is, you have to eat and drink, wala tusrifu. Do not go beyond the limit. So israf, not only in the sense of, you know, taking it more than what you can eat and then throwing it in the garbage. That's the normal meaning of israf. But is, is, israf also means that sometimes you put yourself more than what you really need. And that also is israf, that also creates a problem for us. And this is, this is where we see there is a very interesting um, narration that a, a tabib, a doctor came to Medina, this is not during the days of the Prophet, later on. And, you know, probably he made his uh, services available, but nobody came. And after a few days, you know, he started asking around, don't people become sick here in the city? And then somebody told him, you know, everybody here exercises the ruling, kulu washrabu wala tusrifu. Because all the problems come from here. You know, if you are able to control your belly, health-wise, you will be okay. And that's why this ayat becomes the basis of our health. Kulu washrabu wala tusrifu. You know, of course, um, this is one of the elements of desires that Allah has created within us, and that becomes a problem. And dieting is one of the multi-million or billion business going on. You know, people... Um, if you really sit down and survey the advertisements that we have in, uh, in, TV, uh, in TV, 50 percent or more of it is only about food items. You know, everything is there, and, and this is there, you know, the desire is there, and that is where we have to basically look at this issue from the Islamic perspective, kulu washrabu wala tusrifu. And instead of going into these, you know, um, expensive diet systems where you go into a yo-yo situation down and then up more than what you were before, you know, just follow this simple ruling. Kulu washrabu wala tusrifu. And I'm speaking from my experience. I haven't gone to a diet program. But one of the first things I realized because I had seen somebody else lost wait in a very short time and I said, what did you do? He said, well, I stopped eating bread and rice. I said, if that is the shortcut, yeah, maybe I should try. And I realized that's not sustainable. You know, you can go on without food and, uh, f without bread and rice, but the kind of food that we eat, uh, you know, that's, that diet was not sustainable for me or my choice or my lifestyle. And so there I said, okay, let me go back to a different uh, approach. And the issue was number first, number one, the issue of reducing the intake of food that I normally eat. Make a point. You normally eat this much, consciously look at it and say, okay, I'm going to eat less than this. Same food, but the intake is now less. You'll be able to sustain this for a longer time. You know, and, and this is where the issue of, you know, kulu washrabu wala tusrifu comes in. Look at a, your own situation, things which are, you don't need, need to go into a special program. You know, and if you keep this ayat in mind, inshallah, the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there with us. Salawat I even start, stop drinking very rarely, sometimes in the wedding here, you know, we end up into drinking, uh, you know, seven up or something like that, but that also has become uh, something I wouldn't uh, touch now. And, and all, these are the things we don't need any expert advice on it. Look at our own situation, simple things, you control and you'll be able to sustain that and maintain the loss that you have of your weight. The second thing we see in a hadith is the issue of um, 
decreasing the amount of oily and fatty food. Now, this is not for the young ones, this is not even for the young, uh, you know, the children, this is more for those who are into 40 and up. And especially when we look at the South Asian diet, or the, the kind of food that we eat, uh, it becomes an issue. And I previously never really paid attention to these kinds of ahadith until I got into a situation about 10 years ago. That's why I started paying more ad attention to ahadith dealing with health issues. And it was really amazing for me to see this uh, hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Where once an old person from Kufa, a follower of the Imam, who the Imam knew and had met him before, and this is narrated by his companion Hamad bin Usman. He says, I was sitting there when this visitor from Kufa, an old person, came to the Imam. And while he was talking to the Imam, Imam says, Why do I see that your speech has changed? What has happened to you? And he says that, you know, I had uh, paralysis on my, in my mouth because of the stroke, and I can, I'm stuttering now because of that. An Imam says something which Hamad bin Usman has quoted from him. He says, "Ishtanibu salmon, fainnahu la la yula imu shaykh." Imam says, "Refrain from fat, charbi, because it is not suitable for the old people." So the Imam is only saying, once you get to that old age, you know the intake of uh, fat has to be less in your regular food. There's another hadith from the Imam where he puts the age there, where he says, once a person reaches to the age 50, فَلَا يُبِيْتَنَّ وَفِي جَوْفِهِ شَيْءٌ مِنَ السَّمْنِ He says, the intake of fat in your food should be so less that by the time you go to bed, you have already digested it. This is what the Imam is saying, that when you reach to the age of 50, the intake of fat and charbi has to be so less that by the time you go to sleep, you know, you already digested it. So even the timing of our food uh, has an impl implication in our health. And this is where we see the ahadith from uh, our Imams themselves talking about this 1400 years ago. Look at the statistics that we have here in GTA area. We are told people of South Asian origin, you know, they suffer more from uh, heart disease, more than other ethnic groups. And this has m really much to do with our lifestyle as well as our food. And this is something even from the religious point of view, it becomes important for us to take care of our health. You know, we are blessed to have a health care system here with all the deficiency and long waiting or whatever problems we have, still it is a blessing that Allah has given to us. We should appreciate that. And I would urge you, as a religious requirement it should be, we have the facility, people can go for their annual physical, uh, you know, checkup. This is something you should avail. It is out there. It's a ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and why not take benefit of that? إن الله إن أحسن الحديث كتاب الله العزيز بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الظنب وقابل التوب وهو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبه وبسط اليدين بالرحمة سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا إلا دون وسعها وعفان السيئات ولم يجازبها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد إلا كرما وجودا وعلى كثرة الذنوب إلا عفوا وسفحا 
ونشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العتوف للعباد بجوده والعواد على المظلمين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد النبي هو حبيبا صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموضة الحسنة قادة الأمم وولي عن نعمة ومعدن الرحمة حسوك عباد الله بالطوبة ما صلف من ذنوبكم Since we are talking about health issue, if you look at the life of our uh, great Maraja and Mujtahideen, they live quite long, mashallah. And even though in many cases they are physically very fragile, very weak, but it's amazing that their mental state is always perfect till the end. This, this is something really amazing about them. Maybe that should be a uh, you know, subject for somebody to go and do the research. But one of the things I'll say that in their later part of the life, their food becomes very simple. If not, you know, there are some cases that I know, they would only go with what is known as nano must. You know, just bread and yogurt as their uh, food. And, and this is where we see that, you know, when we talk about the health issue, this is something to keep into uh, consideration even from the religious point of view. Something connected to health issue. I know many people wouldn't like this, but I have to talk about it, and that is smoking. You know, what is the Islamic perspective about smoking? There is no ayat of Quran about it. There is no hadith of any prophet or the imams about this issue. And as far as science is concerned, this was not known to be a problem in the past. And so, so if you go to the mujtahideen, experts of Islamic laws, and you say, okay, what is the ruling about it? They will say, well, there is no ayat which says it's haram. There is no hadith which says it's haram. There is no tradition of the ashab of the imams continually till the time of Ghaybat al for example, where we see any prohibition about it. And medical science, those early days, didn't say anything about it, so they would say, this is jais, this is permissible. And that was the general ruling in the past. Later on, science comes in and says, well, there are problems with it. And when science started to talk about it more strongly, you know, the perspective of, about our mujtahideen on this issue started changing. And now you see a variety of opinions. They have gone from one phase to another. Earlier, you, for example, if you look at the late uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, his perspective was, after he found about the harm of smoking, was that those who are already smokers, in a way addicted to it, he said, those of my muqallideen who are already smokers, they're allowed to continue. But those of my muqallideen who are non-smokers, it's haram for them to start. So basically he was looking, looking at a situation where the next generation would be of uh, non-smokers. The majority, including people like the late Ayatollah Khoi, uh, and even among the present ones, Ayatollah Sistani, as well as Ayatollah Khamenei and others, they basically look at the medical issue and then they leave their responsibility on their individual muqallids. They say if, if smoking is harmful to your health, if you're convinced of the scientific data and research, then it is haram for you to smoke. So they are not giving a clear ruling on this. They are putting it if and then. If you are con convinced, then for you it is going to be haram. Among the present uh, mujtahideen, I only know Ayatollah Nasir Makarim Shirazi, who actually was of the same opinion, that if you are convinced this is harmful, it's haram for you. But then he had a meeting with some of the experts of uh, medical uh, field in, uh, in Iran, where they showed him all the details and the data and the results of smoking, and he reached to the conclusion that now I am taking on the responsibility my muqallideen are not allowed to smoke at all. He's not leaving it on individuals, rather he is giving a fatwa for those who follow him, you know, smoking is made it haram. 
And so we see, you know, depending on the new information that we have from science, you know, certain general rulings of Islam then come into play. And these uh, prohibitions that you see, well, there is no ayat, no hadith. Yes, there is no specific hadith or ayat, but there are certain general rulings. For example, in Surah Baqarah, ayat number 195, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّحْلَكَ Means, do not put yourself by your hands into dis destruction. So this is a general ruling. Smoking was an unknown ent entity before, but now it is known to be something which caused destruction of human life in that way. So they apply that ayat now to this new item that they have dis discovered to be harmful and a basis of halakat, as, as they call it. And so then they would apply that ruling on this new phenomenon of the modern world. But let me conclude with an example from one of the um, past scholars by the name of Ayatollah Hujjat. And the Madrasa Hujjatiya in Qom, very famous, is actually named after him. He's the one who built it. Um, he passed away in 1952. So people didn't really know much about the harm of uh, smoking. But according to one of his students, Shahid Murtaza Mutahiri, he says that he was a chain smoker. Even before his cigarette comes to an end, he will lit the other one. He was truly a, a chain smoker. And he, then he became ill in his old age. He was admitted to the hospital. And after he was recovering, the doctors told him that one of the serious problems you have is the breathing problem, and that's because of your smoking. And so he joked with them. He said, you know, what I'm going to do with a chest that I cannot use for smoking? <laughs> the lungs, the lungs that, you know. Uh, so they said, no, we are serious about this. This is, this is the reason for all the problems you are having. So he says, is this your expert opinion? They said, yes, this is our expert opinion. And as a faqih, he said, if that is the case, right now I quit. Somebody who was a chain smoker, now that he founds, find out from expert opinion on this issue that this is the one which is the basis of my tahlaka, right way there he says, I quit. And this is where you connect the training of the body with the spirit. If you have a strong soul, and that is where Ramadan becomes very important for us, the whole training of taqwa, to be able to control our desires. We should be in a situation that if we find out 100% the expert is saying this is harmful, even we are addicted to it, we should have that strong will and determination to say, I quit. Without the help of all the patches and this and that. Your taqwa, your spiritual power has to be strong enough to be able to sustain you on that level of having power over your body and the desire. And that is the whole essence of the fasting of the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our ma'rifah and give, give us that tawfiq to strengthen our dimension, spiritual dimension. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidul al Mursaleen wa Shafi'il Mughrabin Nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa ala Imam al Muslimin wa Qaid al Ghur al Muhajjalin Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa ala Sayyidatil Nisa'i al Alameen wa Baba'at Khatim al Nabiyyin Sayyidatina Fatimah bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi وعلى سيد الشباب أهل الجنة الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على عيمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا الحجة بن الحسن صاحب العصر والزمان
ما حيا صار البدء والتغيان هادم يا امنيه الشرك والنفاق حاسد فر البغض والشقاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى ابائه الكرام ما اتسلت الليالي والايام اللهم عجل فرج وسهل مخرجه واكحل ناظرنا بنظره منا اليه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه وتفضل على وتفضل على امرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الاقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم اللهم اجعلنا ممن يتذكر فتنفعه بكرا ان الله يعمر بالعد والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون Allahu Akbar of Taqwa, you know, elevating ourselves to a level where we have more consciousness of Allah's presence in our day-to-day -day life. But fasting is also connected to another dimension, which is not the main purpose of Ramadan, and that is the health of a human body. Because if you look at the, look at the ahadith that we have from the Prophet and the Imams, they have emphasized on this point, that one of the ways of keeping yourself um, physically healthy is to go through the process of fasting. But that means not just in the month of Ramadan. You know, there are so many... وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الذين ذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطحرهم تطحيرا رسيكم بعد الله بتقوى الله We are getting close to the month of uh, Ramadan, the month of fasting. While we know that the main purpose of fasting of the month of Ramadan is the spiritual dimension which has to do with the issue of uh, parting, you know, uh, away with something which, which belongs to you. Of course, we know zakat of mal, we know zakat of knowledge to share with others. There is also a concept of zakatul badan. And zakatul badan actually refers to fasting. So you are basically depriving your body of certain things. And that is considered to be one of the ways of keeping ourselves healthy. It's not that Islam is only the world of, uh, the religion of the other world. No, it talks about the importance of health here also. One of the sayings of our first Imam is that, you know, أفضل النعم الصحة The month recommended every Islamic month the first Thursday of the month, last Thursday of the month, the three days in, in between, 13th, 14th, and 15th of the month. But even if you go with the first and the last Thursday, I think that would be... Uh, you can actually combine. If you have qada and you do both, you get sawab for both of it. And so the, the issue of fasting is not just the month of Ramadan, it is across the entire Islamic calendar. One of the concepts that we have in uh, a hadith where they talk about zakat, sharing what you have with others. Basically, Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-ayn al-rajim. Bismillahi rahman al-rahim. Alhamdulillahi na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hadihu. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن تاع 